when you do, when you get angry, do you get southern? When do you get southern? <laughs> I've always wanted to know when you turn southern. Only in the bedroom. Really? You know? you're like, oh, that's some good pussy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gear. that's some. Oh, your pussy like a swamp in July, <laughs> hot and wet. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to know if you like go off and have a Creole accent. Yeah, well, my lady gives uh, like some rough head, so I'm like, oh, you bite like a gator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now watch out now. Oh, yeah. uh, you got possum hands on me. <laughs> Did you like Katie's? from Boston uh-huh. and she had to work on not having a Boston accent. Oh, like her really? and her brother don't have it. Sometimes it pops out. Do you, did you have to work? Cause your parents don't really. Have I never accents. had it. I never, I grew up in that kind of liberal hub in the middle of the city. So it was, well, you it grew was, up in new Orleans, in the city, like in Treme. Yes. Like, French Quarter. Right outside the quarter, my parents had a bed and breakfast, so we had all these kind of weirdo Japanese businessmen, hippy dippy, orgy. So you uh, were like Forrest Gump. Yeah, and yeah. He was like, you like, you showed Elvis how to dance. <laughs> yeah, I that's showed so him. funny. I helped like a politician Wayne. that's like, aha. Yeah. And you go, young Mark Norman gave him that. I do declare. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so, were your did your friends in that area have thick accents? Uh, some of them. We called them coon asses. It'd be like a white guy with a camo hat with the like a hook uh, on it, like a fishing hook. Yeah. And then he had boots in his back back of his truck. Yeah. So we so had those, them around. And those were like swamp boys. Swamp boys who lived like a half hour out, but would drive in to go to school. Because Sean Pat's from Slidell. Yeah. And he he's brought up the same kind of people. Oh really? Where he's like, yeah, coon asses. Yeah, they're out there. They're, it's all wildlife and fisheries guys. You know, they wear boots. They wear tight jeans. They so, do dip. Growing up in Denver, we grew up in the suburbs, mm-hmm. but you would have Eastern Colorado Hicks yeah, that would like go to your middle school and they would show up in like pickup truck, like get dropped off in a pickup truck. Oh yeah. They'd have cowboy boots on. Yeah. We had the same, same group, but it just had that Cajun spice running through them. Did you have any friends that were from the burbs that started talking like that where you're like, oh yeah. In middle school where you're like, why are you talking black? Yes. You don't talk like that. Oh, we had a lot of that. And uh, we had the guys who would pretend to be coon asses. So that was the thing. Those yeah. were the posers. Yeah, because girls liked it. They were tough dudes, really? you know. Yeah. So were they you like to the fit first in. to dip? Oh, yeah. All that shit. Drink. First to dip, get laid, fist fight. You know, they could they could skin a fish. You they, know? So, like, let's say you and your friends are having a party. Bless you. Let's say you and your friends are having a party in high school and they come over. Oh, it was bad news. It was bad? It was bad. You're like, all right, the the mood changed because these guys are here now. Because honestly, the first time I remember Sean Patton brought it up to me, we were, we were somewhere and I was like, whoa, whoa, chill, chill, chill. Like he was like, <laughs> yeah, these coon asses. You're like, damn, all right. No, no. You know, a real Louisiana, but they're white dudes. You white mean dudes. White guys. Yes. Who, at, who are just swamp people. Swamp guys. They have one silver tooth back here. Really? You know, those types. Yeah, yeah. They always had a, a knife on their belt. Which which one of your friends first started acting like that, that you were like, you're not a coon ass? I don't want to say his name, but he bought a big pickup truck. He got it lifted, and he would uh, put mud on it, you no know, to way. look like he went mudding out there in the swamp. So he would go he would go, like mark it up. Yeah, yeah, and he'd exactly. And he'd be like, oh, saw I'll down on there with the gate on and stuff, and then he goes home. He's like, mom, are we having soup? <laughs> yeah, yes, really? he was that guy, yeah. Because I think a lot of us, especially our generation you know we're both in our 40s now but like we saw hip-hop when it was mainstream mm-hmm. rap was like we grew up with rap we were like oh, the yeah. first generation to grow up with like dre and snoop biggie Pac. like we were kids then yes but you saw white kids struggling for an identity oh yeah and they were like well i'll act black yes then it makes it, it it's like a, it's like they're adding seasoning that you're like that's not your season. No, big time. Your name is Caleb. Yeah. You know, relax. And you watch him be like, ha, ha, ha. Yes, it's, it's, yes. What age do people drop that? Is it mid-20s? I know. And then do they do that at Thanksgiving? Like, yeah. yo, fam, hand <laughs> me the yams or whatever. <laughs> I want the big piece. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. My dad would hit me with a with a piano leg if because I did that. I didn't know that, that regionally, like the way you're talking about these guys that act like swamp people. Uh, list would always bust balls of people that were from Boston that would act like they're from Southie. Oh, so they'd act yeah, like, oh, yeah. fucking go, kid. And he's yeah. like, he doesn't, I'm not going to say which comic, but there was a comic when we were all started hanging out that would do an over exaggerated Boston I accent. I know who that you're talking about. And li- it would make List furious. Yeah, you yeah. Know, he fucking hasn't lived there for 15 years. Yeah. And you're like, all right. <laughs> well, the real one is more subtle. You can feel when people are like, pack the car. Yeah. You're like, get the fuck out yeah. of here. Yeah, when they say like, dra or something yes, fucking yes. stupid and you're like, that's not how you talk. The worst is when they type in it. They'll text you and yeah. you're like, uh, 
car and you're like, like get out of here up. come on we know yeah, what you're doing there is a comic that types in a boston accent yeah yeah we, we both know that you're like Ugh. but you it's so like colorado was we're so boring uh -huh. there, there is no like swamp people but you got the boulder hippies and well, you that's got the... what it is you see people act like cowboys mm. or you see people get way too into like mountain life yes where they're yes. like i'm a snowboarder skier and you're like you go like once a year. Yeah. So a couple of my friends were super into it and they always resented the people that were like, oh yeah, I got my pass. That was the big thing. Oh, uh, the pass. I got my five mountain pass. With the lift. And, and, yeah. And they'd be like, I don't even, my friend Joel snowboarded. He would leave school to go snowboarding. Wow. Like in the afternoon, you drive up to him and Mike and a couple of my buddies would like drive up and go snowboarding. And then I was kind of one of the people that'd be like, yeah, I went and I would go like once a year. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't even do that. And, but I would admit it. Right. Because I think that's the safe. If you're like young and you're looking for an identity, admit that and I think you're okay. I This is going to get controversial. Let it But rip. I think that a lot of this like non-binary, that's goth now. Yeah. You know, my yes. brother was goth. He had the fingernails. He had the, half his hair really? black, half his hair white. He had the eyeliner. How, he had the, is the he fishnet. older or younger? Older, older. Really did, fucked up kid. But did you... I'm vegan. Fasc I'm fascinated vegan by Vegan before vegan. My dad's like, you gotta eat meat. He's like, fuck you, dad. And they're what, going out at the dinner table. What launched it? What launched him being goth? Well, I, he was always a sensitive kid. Sure. And, you know, all that big How reader. How older is he than you? Two years. So, uh, not, so you, not different. So it's not like you were like 10 years younger where you didn't see the change. You didn't no, notice no. it. I saw the whole thing. He was like, a, we would fist fight as kids and he would start crying and be like, fuck you and all yeah. that. So he was always slamming doors and cutting, you know. Really? Oh, yeah. When I went skateboard. He went well, goth. And people don't know this about Norman. Norman can fucking legit skateboard. Wow, now I'm 40 now. I'm speaking as a I'll poser. I'll shit blood if I try to do a kickflip. I was I was a poser. Uh, I never skated. Really? I never skated, never, but I, I hung out with them. And like me and uh, my friend, Mike McDaniel, we hung out with the skaters, but we never skated. Didn't oh, have a skateboard. no. I know, but Fruit I'm admitting boot. it. This is me. This is, for anyone that's like, how can you guys talk shit about these people? Yeah. I'm admitting where I was wrong, Dan Poser. I, I was a poser. I bought a mongoose. Oh, didn't know any. No. Didn't know any BMX tricks. Those things aren't cheap either. Well, I saved up for it. Oh, and I you still up. didn't learn. I still didn't learn. That's like marrying a Spanish woman and not learning a lick and of not, Spanish and not fucking her. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it, dude. I did. I I used it for transportation. Yep, that was it. Man. I just liked the culture. Yeah. I liked getting high. Sure. I liked smoking cigarettes. I liked kind of being bad without being bad. Yes, Like, yes. I liked the fact that, like, the preppy kids looked down on us. Right. But it, in a way of not, like, <clears throat> it felt like being like, yeah, you up there in your ivory tower. Right. But I wasn't skating. But that's so weird because we were all the low self-esteem losers. Yeah. Like, I felt like I couldn't play lacrosse or whatever. I so always, we skateboarded. I think that's what it was is I just didn't have any self-esteem. So yeah. I was like, oh, well, I hang out with these kids. But then I was too big of a pussy to do any of the crimes that they were doing. Oh, yeah. Like, they would do crazy shit. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. And Mike and I would just hang out and be like. Yeah. Like, the crazy, like, the only thing that I did that was nuts was asking adults to buy us cigarettes. Oh, come I didn't, on. I didn't have that problem doing that. Yeah, yeah. We would uh, do Yahoo's. You ever do Yahoo's? What's a Yahoo? Oh, that's where like four of you go into a 7-Eleven and one guy goes, which way is 3rd Street? And we all yell, Yahoo, grab a case of beer and run out. Oh, all right. That's yeah. kind of fun. It was fun. We, we got shot them, at once. They called them uh, smash and grabs. Oh, that's so, the new term, right? Well, that's what we would call them back in 8th grade. Oh, really? Yeah. But we didn't smash anything. Well, the the plan was always... Go in. One guy goes in. Yeah. Creates a distraction yeah. to try to pull the shop owner out of the store. Uh -huh. And then you can grab everything you oh, want to. Oh, nice. But what he would do is cigarettes were still on the counter. Mm -hmm. Remember when they still had cigarettes oh, like, yeah. up on the counter? And the uh, they would go in and grab cigarettes right off the counter to try to get the guy. Yeah. But my friend Mitch did it one time it might have been mitch or nick i forget which one did it but they grabbed the cigarette and the guy had a club ready and fucking hit their arm Whoa. like as they were reaching and they were like ah and fucking yeah. ran out uh -huh. and then they tried they wrecked his truck trying to get him to come out and mike and i just were chilling outside on our bikes on lookout yeah yeah but <laughs> we were being pussies and 
it didn't work. Yeah. So they just like fuck this dude's truck. I mean, he's like 13 year old uh, kids. And you're like, man, that's why I get nervous around teenagers in the city. Oh, they're terrifying. You're like, they have that thing of like, I'll go fucking nuts. They got nothing to lose and it's all that dick energy. You know, yeah. they're just full of jizz. Yeah, your balls are just so yes. full that you're like, I got to destroy something. It comes out in rage. Yeah, I'm so full of life in my yes, nuts yes. that I have to destroy something. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's, back in the day, they just go to war. And now you, we don't do that. Did you smoke weed or cigarettes? Because skaters were the ones, that was the group that, in, at least in my where I grew up, they were the first ones to get fucked up. We got so drunk. I never touched the the cigarettes. I couldn't afford, and then yeah. weed was was. I was already an anxious mess, so yeah. weed just elevated that, which was bad. So That's I would just probably booze. for the best. Yeah, yeah. I, I look at my friends who wake up and smoke weed, and it looks so fun. They're at a party with a joint. If I did that, I'd be in the corner crying. Can I tell you right now, as a guy that does that, a lot of the times I'm very anxious. How do you do it? I don't know, because when it does work. It's great. Yeah. When it does calm me, when I'm here at home playing video games, just hanging out with her and the dog, great. Yeah. I'll get high and like bump into a comic that I haven't seen in a while. Oh. And I'm like, oh. This is my oh. hell. Yeah. And it sucks. It sucks. It does and suck. All the bad thoughts go up. The good thoughts are gone. And it's just, they hate me. I said something stupid. It's all yeah. insecurity. And you're like, you fuck. And they're remembering it. Yes. Yeah. It's so yes. When did you start boozing? Oh, geez, 13, we would just uh, get after it. A lot of Mad Dog 2020, yeah, a lot of... Uh, was, that was going to be my follow-up question, was what did you start drinking? Squeezy bottles of vodka, the the the, the plastic, yeah. you know, the handles. The Burtons or yes, the uh, McCormick's. Oh, yeah, all that shit. Irish uh, name vodka, you're in trouble. Yeah. It's going to be bottom <laughs> barrel, and you're going to be in big fucking trouble. <laughs> you got we, that right. We used to drink... Because when you, when you get into drink, was it the skaters that got you into drinking? Yeah, pretty much. And I went to a Catholic high school. You know, so my I went so to you public. Guys go hard. Yeah, I went to public my whole life. My dad's like, it's getting a little dicey. Your grades are horrible. We're putting you in a private school. Now, what what grade was that? That was ninth grade. So going into high school. Yeah. So you had to change high schools. Public my whole life, and uh, friends got beat up. Some kids went to jail. One kid OD'd. Really? So yeah. At like thirteen. Yeah, On heroin. What? Heroin. Heroin. I know two guys who died of heroin, and one died of methadone. New Orleans was a dicey place. Well, that's also the thing is you're in a fucking city, a like, boozy party city. You're in a party city. I was in a suburb of Denver. Right. Aurora is just a suburb of Denver, so you're like. The stuff that got to us was regular suburban shit. Oh, yeah. Weed, booze. As we got older, ecstasy broke when we were in high school. But cocaine wasn't even around until my senior year. Oh, yeah. So the fact that you knew people dying of heroin in middle school is It was bad. Nuts. I always say New Orleans is Vegas with better food and black people. That's funny. You know, and yeah, it's yeah. it's just, everything is just And then you go to North Vegas notch. and you go, the black people are in Vegas. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my friend lived in Vegas, black dude that lived in Vegas, and he, he was like, he's like, Oh, you don't go to North Vegas. Yeah, yeah. He's like, it's fucking, di it's it's real shady. Are there gangs in Vegas? There's a lot. Oh, Vegas really? Vegas is a real, outside of the strip, it's a shithole. Yeah. Because it's in the desert. It's desert. Everything is about gambling, sex. It's all, it's, it's accurate to call New Orleans like Vegas. Yeah. Because there is like an element of tourists are coming, yep. dumping in money, getting fucked up. Yep. So... I bet there's a lot of great schemes in both cities. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, growing up, if any guy, if every guy comes up and he goes, "Bet I can tell you where you got your shoes," dude, I, I fell for that. Yeah, I everybody swear does. to God, I fell for that in New Orleans, where he goes, "I can tell you where you got your shoes," and you go, "Where?" And he's, what is it, on your feet? On your feet. And then you got to give the guy money. And he goes, "Now give me money." And that really is the thing that happened. It right? works all the time. My my uncle did it to me. I was really? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're like you're, a fucking family. Yeah. Wait, did you? When you're growing up in New Orleans, are you like, I'm going to leave New Orleans? Because wh where I grew up in the Burbs, it's easy to leave the Burbs. Right. Because you go like, get me the fuck out of here. Well, it's hard because all your friends want you to lose. You know, it's like it, all my friends now are line cooks and mechanics yeah. growing up. One's a fireman and he made it. Yeah, yeah, You know, but like uh, they don't, they, they're like, are you doing comedy you're on stage? What are you, some kind of theater fag? And yeah. I'm like, ah, I try to be funny. And they're like, but you're not that funny. And you're like, all right, I guess I'll stay here. Uh, have you noticed, have they stopped talking to you the more successful you've gotten? Oh, 100%. When I moved to New York, they would fuck with me and put my phone number on Craigslist. What? And be like, oh, he's giving away a PS1. And I would get all these calls and my phone would blow up. And I'm like, God damn it. They couldn't, they couldn't resist. But when you talk to him, was it like, was it a sense of like, 
ah, we're just busting your balls because you moved her. They're like, fuck you. No, it was Who a, are you to leave? We were still cool, but it was tension. Like, I'd show back up for Thanksgiving. Like, Let's get drunk. And then after eight beers, I'm in a headlock. And they're like, you think you're better than us? You know? <laughs> so you, I just well, had to cut it, it off. I mean, I would probably say in the last five years, you've really fucking gotten on like you're real you're one of the top guys well now they're cool with it now they're like so hey, now we, we came went, back around yeah we went to high school with this guy he was a good friend and I'm so like, once they know you yeah yeah now it's you had to get there yeah but the the beginning was hell yeah because they're like who the fuck are you oh dude they shot up my house with paintball guns oh, once man. i mean it was great it was crazy when you transfer to the private school yeah and the friends that stay at public school do they feel betrayed a little, but you could blame that on the folks, yeah. you know, and that was a big transition for me, like uniform, chapel, really? praying. I was, you know, my parents are big hippie atheist yeah. queefs, you know, so that was weird. So you go into this thing, you're like, I don't know what any of this oh, is, my especially God. if you're not raised around religion. No way. Then you're like, wait, I have to do what? I know. And you had to go to assembly and there's a marching band. We didn't have any of that shit. How close were, now growing up, you're in the French Quarter growing up. How close is the private school to you? Not that close. Do so you have to take a bus or a parent drives you? My dad would drive me and he made it very known that he hated it. Really? He was like, when I was a kid, no one drove me to school. And like, all right, we do this every we day, all, dad. Trust me, dude, I don't want to go. Yeah, I don't want to go. And he would always have boxers on because just like that's how little commitment he wanted to put it in. And he would have one hand in the shorts and one on the wheel. No way. Yeah, my dad was all ball grabbing son of a bitch <laughs> all day long. He was Bundy in on the way to school? Yeah, but from the bottom in, you know. <laughs> oh, and man, that's huge, nuts. Huge, huge balls on my dad yeah <laughs> crazy big, big sack on the guy crazy and then sack. was your brother just in the back crying yeah, yeah 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 when did your brother because you watch your brother go into being a goth yeah when did you watch him come out of it i think college hit and he was like all right well i gotta grow up what am i doing he just scrapes the fingernail paint off and yeah he's like, you know what life is pain but it's a subtle pain <laughs> yeah he went to a, a public school and he got beat up within like two days yeah and my parents took him out put him in the smart kid school okay and then he became goth because it was safe if he yeah. went goth to the other school they would have killed him smart kid school you get to really experiment yes smart kid school alternative high schools uh-huh did you know any of those kids no no my friend mitch knows saying his older brother went to like the alternative high school and you were like oh he's too live for public school right, where right. Like, we gotta we gotta send you to a place where it's like it's, <clears throat> it's almost like juvie but school yes exactly and those kids would come around and you're like do not fuck with them no they no, already no. are on their way out yeah yeah we had a couple of those uh, these two twins would terrorize the city i'm not gonna say their name because i'm still scared is of it them. like rujo <laughs> yeah it like, similar is yeah. it like oh it's the Thibodeau boys are back again <laughs> the boudreau twins <laughs> the Bo oh say no paul the boudreaux it's <laughs> like fucking half french one is dead now he okay. got killed in a bar fight i think and the other one i think is a cop really? but they would just show up at parties and just start havoc because they're i think their dad beat the shit out of them but yeah always what it is always. january 4th through the 6th gonna be at the port in baltimore come on out working on new jokes gonna hang out have fun to start off 2024 dansoder.com for full dates and cities i'm gonna be everywhere so we'll see you in the year 2024 hope you have good holidays christmas hanukkah kwanzaa all the hits happy new years and we'll see you in 2024 Thanks for listening. Yeah. Always what it is. Always. Always what it is. This guy it, that was one of the scariest guys, and I won't say his name because he's still alive, I think. One of the most terrifying, he was a year older than us, and he hung out with like, I grew up, where I grew up in Aurora was very safe. It was suburbs. There were a couple bad kids. It was middle class, like dead middle class. Oh, I love middle class. But North Aurora, kind of closer to Denver, was got real bad yeah and one of our guys at our high school hung out with the dudes were like they would come down to where we lived and you were like you can have the run of the place yeah yeah no one's fucking sticking up <laughs> right and there was this guy and i'll i'll say his name because it's not a real legal name but there was this older mexican dude named spider oh god i'm already scared and he drove like a hoopty uh -huh. and he was like he was a boy man I'm a man boy now, uh -huh. obviously, with all the fucking poison shit sure. you can see. I'm a, he was a boy man. Like, he was a man when he was a boy. Stash at 13. Stash and, like, hardcore, like, what the fuck you looking at, bro? Oh, you yeah. did not fuck with him. And one time, me, my friend Dennis, and Mike McDaniel, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, 
Uh, wow. We were, yeah, he was the one that like, he's the one out of all my friends that's successful. Yeah. So me, they're like HBO. Yeah, right, nice right. <laughs> they go, yeah, Mike's on HBO right now on Hard Knocks. And yeah. Like, cool, but I did mine with Sillies. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're chilling in, you know, like freshman year of high school, you would just like want to stay outside. Oh yeah. You just did want to go inside. Definitely. Adults were inside. Yeah. Adult, adults were, the rules were inside. Yes. As long as you stayed outside, but we were chilling. We were, we, I think we were all sleeping at Mike's house. We stayed, stayed at Mike's house a lot and it was me, Dennis and Mike. And we see this Cadillac come down the street and take a left. So go away from us, uh -huh. like towards my friend Joel's house. And we're like on the driveway and we're like, Oh, I think that's Spider's car. Oh, God. As soon as we say that, the car does a U-turn and starts driving towards us and goes across the street, comes up the driveway where we're sitting. Oh, God. And we bail. We go over the fence. Yeah. Dude, they chased us into the backyard, and it was him. And he got dude, to the point where we went in Mike's back door, shut the door and locked it, and... This guy, Spider and Andy, were at the door going, doo, 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 what do they um, want? We have no idea. Oh, my God. We have God. no idea. We ran upstairs, and then, like, Mike's parents were like, who's in the backyard? And they took off oh. and left. I think they were just scaring us. I think so, but too. If you, run, if you ran at 14, someone would chase you. Oh, that was just the rule. How fun was that? I hated it. Well, like, yeah, he's running, was... get him. And you're like, but what did I do? Yeah, but we would what? do that in the burbs. What you would do is... We'd make it look like people were fighting. Yeah. And then the car would pull up and then we'd all split. Uh, and that was like the rush. Oh, that's fun. That was that's like the fun. prank thing. But get, it's weird how much you get chased between oh. the ages of 10 and 15. Well, there was no phone. So yeah. you're like, that guy's running. Chase him. Yeah. You know, there wasn't like, ah, oh, I'm scrolling here. Yeah, that's you know? how the kids stop it now. They go like, whatever. Yeah, I I'm got a notification. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a notification. I'm getting chased. Yeah. <laughs> but, but really, if you think about it, it's... The worst group to chase is 10 to 15 because they're agile. Yeah. They can fall and get right back up. Yeah, yeah. And we can hide in little cubbies and yeah. shit. Chase 35 to 45. That's a win. We're groaning. We're sighing. Yeah. We're going to get winded. <laughs> right, right. Learn, learn which of your prey to chase. Well, I feel like my most of our childhood was fear. Yes. Like you go to the party, say the wrong thing. You get chased by this guy. You got El Spider O yeah. is on, on your fence, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. So that was a big part of it because there was nothing to do but taunt, torment, or be tormented. And without phones you yes. were in it you yes. were in it every oh, day you were in it god the bus did you have to ever have to ride I a never bus? did the bus dude i'll tell you right now man bus stops are a microcosm for all of that you go to the bus stop there's a pecking order mm -hmm. you're scared i like the cool kids are in the back of the bus it's like jail it really is and it would be like i think that's what really got me smoking cigarettes was because it was an immediate status upgrade uh-huh He's like, oh, Soder smokes. Wow, uh, he's hanging out with all the skaters. Like, right. You wouldn't get picked off if you yes. were in a group. Yes. Well, it's like the Aryan Nation. Yeah. You're like, I guess I got to go with these psychos. Uh, you're like, I personally like black and brown people, but I got to keep my my ass safe yeah. in Rikers. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that so, swastika tat. Yeah. Bring it you on. Know, I would prefer to do the shamrock, but I'm not going to murder a guy yeah. inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like, I mean, you, you grow up in a place like, did it seem crazy to you at the time? Like, Oh, we're in New Orleans. Or you're just like, nah, this is just where we grow well, up. Well, I'll tell you what it would happen is when you'd go to your friend's house in the Burbs and he'd leave his bike in the front lawn, the, the doors open, his yeah. mom's got orange slices, and you're like, this is heaven. Yeah. This is amazing. So and our then boredom home. was your heaven. Oh, my God. Just safety and that freedom of just like, oh, yeah, the bikes are fine. You're yeah. like, what are you kidding? They're going to they're gonna take the, the wheels off. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to get stripped down. Yeah. When did you start hanging out in the Burbs a lot? How old I mean, were you? high school, you would go out to the Burbs just like, sleepovers so and Catholic, parties. The, the Catholic school, you meet kids from the birds. Yes, completely. And that was huge. That was eye-opening. What was their reaction to coming to where you live? Some of them, my friends' parents wouldn't let them sleep over. They would drive up, see the house, be like, we're, 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 let's get out of here. This is no crazy. Way. Yeah, call them. And this poor cell phone. So you would drive up, 
They would keep driving, and no I was on the porch way. like, what happened? You had friends bail on sleepovers? Yeah, well, you had these like crazy soccer mom ladies who were just like, oh, this is too dangerous. And they, you know, I grew up in this crazy uh, dilapidated mansion, so they're yeah. like, oh, you're not sleeping there. You there's grew up in a haunted house? On the window flapping, yeah. and there's a trans guy with a wig at <laughs> yeah. the front door. Yeah, your brother is sitting there with bloody yeah. arms, <laughs> yeah, and you right. got a Frankenstein <laughs> yeah. fucking butler. He's recreating the crow <laughs> yeah. outside. He's like, sorry, only beware all that lives here here is pain yeah. and you're like that's mark's older brother we're fine yeah does it do you ever make fun of your brother for being goth nah nah i don't want to hurt him yeah he's very sensitive yeah, that, i mean obviously yeah yeah he was playing he wasn't playing a part no he actually did find his right group he if did. you're sensitive enough goth could be where you land but goth had that weird through line of rage of like more human than human <laughs> yeah. you know that was going through his head all the time yeah. <laughs> he's got a fucking rob yeah. zombie riff playing and right. he's like because you do got to pump yourself up to cut yourself. Yeah, good point. Good you can't point. just like, no one relaxingly goes like, ow. Yes, you yes. You got to be like, oh, oh. So you put on white zombie. Right, right. I'm going to ever... fuck you like that animal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just nine inch nails and m- machine rock. Yeah. Did you ever, when he came back from being a goth, were you ever like, good to have you back? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, hey, we're watching a movie. It's fun. Yeah. Good times. And now he has kids. He's just a dad now. Yeah. And that is that is interesting because you we're all grown up now. Yeah. So to see the people either go through the phase where they act black or they're goth. Yes. Or, or they're the coon asses. Yeah, it fizzles out. But I mean, that's going to happen with kids now. Like, oh, I thought you were uh, bi, trans, gay. And they're they go, like, well, well, I identify as just a bored kid now. Yes. I've evolved out of it or whatever you, the hell. I mean, did your friend that acted like a swamp? A swamp guy did he come back to oh yeah right? oh yeah well you, again he had like a nice house rich yeah. family so eventually you just go like i'd like to have money and you know a car and yeah. hang out you wonder if the effort isn't worth it after a while totally if you just wake up one day and you're like ah, ha, ha. yeah i'm not gonna talk like that <laughs> yeah well that's how strong <laughs> you that wake up you're like yo my man i'm sorry hey, yeah Mom. yeah well that's how strong it is to want to fit in you'll you'll go that far yeah you'll wear a costume you'll yeah. andrew dice clay it I mean, I remember, for me, I tried to fit in by playing football. I mean, I loved football, and I wanted to play football. But I really thought, like, oh, I'll fit in by playing football. And then I wasn't good. Yeah. I could, I could like, hit hard, but I wasn't, like, good at the sport. Yeah. And then that's kind of how I, I was like, oh, I'm funny. And then by the time I was a junior, senior year, I was like, oh, I'm just, like, a funny stoner guy. Yeah, but that's like, a fun group, too. But it is a fun group. Yeah. And you kind of feel more comfortable. Of course. You find... Well, that's what comedy was. Remember when you first started doing comedy, you're like, Dude, my people! It I, was... I can say anything around you guys. I remember when you hung out with Joe List the first time. Mm-hmm. Joe and I hung out a couple nights later because you were hanging out with Matt Ruby. Yeah. Because I knew Ruby when I first started, and then you moved here from New Orleans. Yeah. We all moved here in 07, right? Did you move here in 07? Uh, yeah, late 07, yeah. wow. Because I was here at the beginning of 07, and I met List when he moved in the spring, but I would hang out with Ruby, List, our friend Joe Alexander, and then you showed up, started hanging out, and I remember List and you hung out, and I remember specifically what he said. He goes, hey, he's one of us. Oh. He, goes, he goes, he just wants to talk bits. He wants to talk about old specials. Get drunk. We get get Quote hammered Chris and go Rock. do horrible mics. Yes. And then try to sneak into the cellar to watch Geraldo or yeah. fucking Atel. Yeah, those were the days. Just mooching free booze, drink oh tickets, God. drinking whatever was on the bar. Going to going to like um what what was the mic that uh Ochi's Lounge? Oh yeah. With Every Sean week. Donnelly ran that in the basement. Every week, yeah. But it really was a thing of like I remember meeting comics, talking about meeting your own. It was the first time I met grown dudes that I could talk professional wrestling with oh, yeah. that immediately I wasn't called gay. Totally. That, that was nice. Everyone I knew in Arizona, everyone I knew in Colorado, I'd be like, bring up wrestling. And they'd be like, what? Yeah. And comics were the first, also comics were the first person, people that I met that admitted to playing with action figures late into life. Yeah. Good point. Where I was like, oh, we all, we're all nerds. Yeah. We're all nerds of a different breed. That's what it is. That come together. We're all nerds. And it, it was comforting because we're all thinkers. Yeah. And we don't judge. <clears throat> so sorry. A little semen. Yeah. We don't judge so quick. Like, like if I asked you, like, you think pedophiles who fuck little boys get made fun of by pedophiles and fuck girls. <laughs> and, and then you, you're like, and then it's an hour conversation. Now it's, now it's a count. Well, you do you that go, do, a, you, do they call them gay? Yeah. Do they like, or is that like 
the veal of pedophile exactly it's like boy butt yes. better than little girl pussy yeah, yeah, like, yeah. these are the things these we the want things. to discuss our pedo's like mm, six yeah. year you know oh, can yeah, they tell know. the difference with you a, don't a want kid? a kid that's athletic it strains the yes, meat yes yes <laughs> a little flabby not a fat kid though yeah, yeah. so we can but, do that but yeah. you do that at the quad in college and yeah. you're like this fucking guy's a pedophile yeah, he's I, a weirdo you know what's weird is because where did you go you went to lsu yeah, I got failed out of three colleges. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What three schools? I went to LSU for 10 minutes, failed out of there, because that's like actually a pretty good school. So, yeah. And then I uh, went to Southeastern, which is in Homa, Louisiana. We're Homa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No Homa. And, uh, <laughs> and then I went to UNO, originally New Orleans University, failed out of there quick. So I finished up online. Nice. Yeah. Did you go to Phoenix University? No, I couldn't even get into that one. You got DeVry? Yeah, you basically. Got? I got yeah. a Baton Rouge Community College. Yeah. Baton Rouge, which sucks because now you're in the town of the university yes, you were in. Yes, yes, but I'd still go to those parties. <laughs> That's great. And they're like, do what you are you cheer? majoring in? I was like, uh. Do you cheer for LSU? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you technically, you're like, I went there. Kind of, yeah. My friend Joey grew up in Colorado, never even been to Louisiana, huge LSU fan. Go Tigers. And I go, go Tigers. But I remember going there and being like, I bought a merch and I mailed it to him. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, but you didn't even go here. I know. Why am I doing this? Stolen valor. But I do that with the University of Colorado. I never went there, but I grew up loving the buffs. There you go. And so when Dion came back, when Dion took over, I was like, I love the buffs. Yeah. But I did feel a little bit. It was, you know what? It was adult poser. I felt <laughs> yeah, like an adult poser. There you go. If we don't call this episode posers. We're, we're really fucking up. Yeah, uh, Parker Poser. Yeah, yeah. but I remember <clears throat> when I went to U of A, I went to Arizona, and I wasn't, I didn't fit in. Yeah. I didn't fail out because my mom made it like pretty clear, like, please, for me, get a college degree. That's the same. She's like, I don't give a shit what you do with it. Just please give me that degree. But I did not like the social scene. It was too fratty. It was two rich kids from San Diego and Long Island. I just didn't. I had my friends. I definitely made friends. I had some good friends. But I immediately started doing radio and comedy. Mm. And when I found the comedy club and I got comfortable there yeah. at Laughs, that was my party. Oh, like, right. oh, I'll go on a Thursday night. Everyone would go to the bar. I'd be like, well, I'm going to go do the mic. Yeah. Or try to get a guest set. Right. Because that was big. That's huge. Wait, wait so you started young. I started at 21. Okay. That's my, I started my junior year of college, which is where wow. I started doing stand-up. Oh, man. So is that Lake Havasu? Is that over there? Havasu's in Arizona. Okay. But I never went, like, spring break for me would be like, oh, I can go do the road. Wow. I can go host at Laughs Albuquerque. Wow. Or go do, like, here's where I was lucky starting in Arizona. A lot of casino gigs. Really? So they needed openers. Yeah. And I want, you know, it's like kind of like when we started hanging out in New York, we would go do whatever mic we could. Sure. Wherever there was a mic, we could do it. That's kind of how Arizona was. Yeah. Where they were like, you can do this fucking, the Desert Diamond Casino, but it's going to suck. And you're yeah. like, I'll do it. Yeah, of course. And they're like, can you do 30? You're like, yeah, but you can only do eight. Wow, you got great exposure quick. But not to good comedy. Dude, I love hanging out with you. Hey, is we it over? rarely do it. That flew by. Yeah, but I told you when you were like, "What's the podcast?" I was like, "This is it. This is great." I just want to ask you questions I've always wanted to ask. Well, you. it's good because some of these pods you got to come in with a poem and a haiku <laughs> yeah. and it's all this story bullshit. And we're we're gonna edit it down to like one premise. Oh, really? And then we release that. He's the he's a fucking wizard. Yeah, but that's notes. what I mean. He like we we're gonna get it where it's like a nice, tight, concise. But for plugs, marknorman.com. MarkNormanComedy.com. MarkNormanComedy. Some dot real, com. realtor cunt got uh, Mark Norman. Piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, one of the best working stand up comics out there. A true Ooh. mensch. A guy that loves comedy in a way that's. Uh, I, I love watching him write jokes. I love watching him work jokes. He's always been one of the real ones. Oh, um, hey, jeez. MarkNormanComedy.com. Listen to Tuesdays with Stories. Yes. We and, might be drunk. Uh, protect our parks when it happens. Oh, yeah. We're back on next week. Are you? Yeah, those take a, a week off your life. They, we just go I mean, so you just hard. do four hours. Four hours of shrooms, booze, pill, coffee, sometimes that Molly. Sounds, actually, that sounds incredible. And that's just what Ari puts in your drink when you're <laughs> in the bathroom. Uh, I love you, dude. Thanks for coming hey, by. Hey, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, MarkNormanComedy.com. And yeah, bye. I'm Kevin Hart. <laughs>